Good morning or good evening, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is George Moose, and I have the honor of serving as the chair of the Board of Directors of the United States Institute of Peace. Founded by Congress in 1984, the Institute partners with stakeholders around the world to research, support, and advance strategies to prevent, mitigate, and resolve violent conflict. And even in this virtual world, the Institute has been able to draw on its exceptional experience and reputation as a convener to bring together diverse audiences to exchange knowledge and ideas for developing solutions to the most pressing peace and security challenges. Which brings us to why we are here today. On August the 3rd of this year, USIP launched its new Vietnam War Legacies and Reconciliation Initiative with an online event entitled, Addressing the Legacies of the Vietnam War, The Next Step Forward. Today's webinar builds on that discussion, which is available for viewing on the Institute's website, usip.org. The support this initiative has received from both the US and Vietnamese governments is a sign of the important progress that has been made in building a meaningful partnership between our two countries, nearly 50 years after the end of the Vietnamese American War. While we celebrate the achievements of this Vietnam US partnership, we recognize that there is much more work to be done. Most notably, we see the physical and non-material legacies of war as both an ongoing challenge and a foundation for our ongoing cooperation. We know well that it takes time to fully reconcile and heal after a violent conflict. Efforts by Vietnamese as well as Americans to account for missing personnel and unrecovered remains from all sides of the conflict are an important part of this process of reconciliation. It is, first and foremost, a basic obligation of all governments after any war to honor those who died. This has taken on a particular importance following the war in Vietnam, with both nations deeply motivated by a commitment to work together to obtain the evidence that would end the uncertainty of the families of those who died during wartime. Today's presentations and discussions have three purposes. The first is to showcase US-Vietnam cooperation in the search for and identification of American and Vietnamese wartime remains. Secondly, through video and photographic presentations, they will share the personal stories of Vietnamese families who lost relatives in the war. And finally, they will discuss why this issue remains important to the people and governments of both countries. I am delighted to welcome our distinguished speakers and panelists, who notably include retired General Kelly McCaig, Senior Colonel Duan Quang Hoa, and Deputy Chief of Mission Wang Tang Ma. To lead off the discussion, let me turn first to Mr. McCaig who is the Director of the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency. His agency is charged with the worldwide search, recovery, and identification of the remains of all missing Americans from World War II through the Iraq War. Director McCaig is a 34-year veteran of the U.S. Air Force, retiring with the rank of Major General. In his seven years as leader of the POW MIA mission, he has been a principal interlocutor with senior Vietnamese government officials. Director McKay. Ambassador Moose, Deputy Chief of Mission Nang A, Senior Colonel Wah, and all participants in this important forum. Good morning from the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency here in Washington, DC. Special thanks to the US Institute of Peace for organizing this important program. Simply stated, the DPAA has the sacred obligation to search for, recover, and identify Americans missing from World War II to Operation Iraqi Freedom. They number more than 81,000, of which we estimate 38,000 to be recoverable. Although daunting, each number is also a unique story 
with memories that transcend decades of time and generations. Their families who bear this grief also cope with the uncertainty associated with the loss of their loved one. While the United States did search for its missing after World War II and the Korean War, the mission after the Vietnam War used more modern techniques and technologies. It also benefited from the active engagement of the National League of POW MIA families, whose grassroots efforts turned into a widespread campaign that made the nation mindful and compelled our leaders to rightfully act. The first U.S. investigation teams arrived in Vietnam in 1985, and regular joint investigative and recovery operations began in 1988. Since then, this noble effort has been performed jointly and has grown in scope and accomplishment. Today, the 145th Joint Field Activity is in progress with 51 DPAA members deployed since mid-October. While 1,245 U.S. personnel remain missing in Vietnam, 727 have been accounted for in the over three decades of cooperation. The POW MIA mission is widely recognized as humanitarian and an element of diplomacy and engagement. DPAA is dependent upon and appreciative of the essential access and cooperation provided by 46 host nations around the world. For Vietnam, the U.S. set up an official presence to pursue the accounting missions 10 years before formal diplomatic relations were restored. In fact, all parties agree that the trust and goodwill developed during these early years of this humanitarian endeavor was foundational to normalization. Not only is the POW MIA mission an important facet of the U.S.-Vietnam relationship today, but that initial cooperation has turned into effective collaboration. As has been the case for over 30 years, our relationship with the Vietnamese government and its citizens on the POW MIA mission is primarily handled through the Vietnamese Office for Seeking Missing Persons. The VNOSMP is a unique organization comprised of representatives from the ministries of foreign affairs, national defense, and public security, which highlights the interagency aspects of Vietnam's national commitment. One of the most notable examples of effective collaboration is the establishment and operation of U.S. trained Vietnamese recovery teams. It is worth noting that Vietnam is one of only two countries in the entire Indo-Pacific region authorized to conduct unilateral excavations on behalf of DPAA. This is due to their dedication and demonstrated capabilities, developed in coordination with our laboratory and improved over the years. These three teams proved even more critical when DPAA teams were not permitted entry due to COVID-19 for almost a year. Vietnam unilaterally deployed these teams who completed a total of 13 excavations and recovered potential American remains from four of them. This past March, one of these was identified. Commander Paul Charvet, a Navy pilot from Washington State, lost in March 1967 and whose remains a Vietnamese team recovered near Hanh Mai Island. Because of the tens of thousands still missing from past wars, DPAA is increasingly turning to private partners. These are universities and non-governmental organizations who augment DPAA's capacity and capabilities to be able to do more. They are equally talented and passionate in conducting the painstaking research and challenging field work to find missing Americans. Of the 182 arrangements we have with NGOs and universities, 66 are actively advancing this mission with invaluable expertise and technology. It is important to note that Vietnam has supported this initiative by allowing the use of private partners. In 2020, two NGOs, Project Recover and the Scripps Oceanographic Institute, completed an underwater recovery off the coast of Vietnam. They recovered the remains of Air Force Major Paul Avalis of New York, 
who was lost in July 1967 and identified in September 2020. <laughs> For DPAA, our work begins with research and analysis. And whether it's studying archives, conducting witness interviews, collaborating with our Stony Beach partners, our analysts work closely with the VNO SMP to ensure field operations can be accomplished as best as possible. This was manifested when one of our scientists returned from a joint forensic review last month in Vietnam, bringing home four remains that have potential association to a U.S. serviceman. Two of the remains from were from excavations Vietnamese teams unilaterally conducted. One was recovered by a joint U.S.-Vietnam team, and one was unilaterally turned over by a Vietnamese villager. Forensic analysis of these remains is in progress. The accounting mission in Vietnam has not been without its casualties. In April 2001, a Vietnamese helicopter carrying seven Americans and nine Vietnamese on a survey and investigation mission crashed in Quang Binh province. This past year, we celebrated and commemorated the 20th anniversary of this crash that killed all on board with ceremonies at the Pentagon and at, in Vietnam at the site. Ladies and gentlemen, it's important to recognize that this work, this humanitarian effort, this obligation, as Ambassador Moose mentioned, is something that has defined the Vietnam-U.S. relationship. As it has since 1988, searching for, recovering, and accounting for unreturned veterans from the Vietnam War will comprise most of our operations and operational budget. We will do the best we can to maintain the necessary pace and scope within the fiscal challenges we are facing more and more. The vigorous pursuit of America's missing is both a solemn obligation and a moral imperative because these unreturned veterans, in the words of President Abraham Lincoln, made the last full measure of devotion. After over three decades of staunch Vietnamese government support to the United States accounting mission, the U.S. government, led by U.S. Embassy Hanoi and U.S. Agency for International Development, is now actively supporting the Vietnamese War Accounting Initiative. But all of what I've highlighted this morning can best be captured to the words of a family member whose loved one was missing for decades, found and identified, and returned home. Major Dean Klender grew up on a farm in Kansas. After pilot training, he was shot down over Vietnam in 1965 at the age of 25. After multiple field excavations, we found remains in 2014 that we identified as Major Dean Klender. Then in 2016, 51 years after the day he was shot down, he was buried next to his parents in a church cemetery. On that day, his younger and only sister, Deanna, who you see here, said this. Today was a celebration of his life. It was a very beautiful, joyous day. Never say never and never give up something worth fighting for. Thank you again to the United States Institute for Peace for organizing this initiative and this program to highlight this important humanitarian effort. More importantly, thank you to the government of Vietnam for over the three decades of support to the POW MIA mission. Obviously, this collaboration directly benefited the Charvet, Avalis, and Clenda families, but it has also had a far-reaching effect on the reestablishment of diplomatic relations and today's comprehensive partnership the United States and Vietnam have fostered. Thank you again for the opportunity to address you. I thank you, uh, Director McCaig, for laying the foundations for our discussions and conversations this morning, or this afternoon, evening, depending on where you were joining us from. It is now my pleasure to introduce Senior Colonel Duan Quang Hoa. Since March 2019, he has served as Deputy Secretary of the Party Committee 
and Deputy Director, Deputy Director of the Policy Department, General Political Department, Ministry of National Defense. He is also Deputy Chief of Office of National Steering Committee 515 on search, return, and identification of remains of fallen soldiers. Prior to 2019, he held positions in the Division of Martyr Tomb Affairs and Division for War Invalids, Martyrs, and Revolution Contributors of the Policy Department, General Political Department. He also served as Deputy Political Commissar of the Puta Provincial Military Command. Colonel Hua, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I'm very honored to attend the event today hosted by the U.S. Institute of Peace and Harvard University so that we can exchange and take stock of what we have done to promote cooperation and make Vietnam wartime accounting more effective. On behalf of the National Steering Committee 1515, I'd like to extend to all of you my best wishes and greetings. The event today is of great significance, especially at a time when the two sides just signed a memorandum of understanding between the Office of the National Steering Committee on the Wartime Accounting and the Office of the U.S. Defense Attaché in Hanoi during the visit to Vietnam by U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin in July 2021. It also builds on the success of the virtual event addressing the legacies of the Vietnam War organized by the USIP on the 3rd of August, 2021. This is an opportunity for agencies, organizations, managers, scientists, and experts of the two sides to discuss the progress being made, uh, strengthen practical and effective cooperation on issues of concern and enhance uh, joint efforts in Vietnam wartime accounting. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Currently, it is uh, becoming increasingly difficult to identify and recover the Vietnamese wartime remains. The biggest challenge is that there's fewer accurate information. The war prolonged while the topography changes naturally in the process of social economic development. Most of the witnesses who know the information about the wartime remains are old. Uh, their memory is uh, fading, while the archives are not complete. Uh, based on the statistics that we have, Vietnam still has around 200,000 remains of uh, fallen soldiers that need to be recovered. Uh, based on the information sources provided by U.S. organizations and individuals, Vietnamese agencies and local governments have verified, identified, and recovered with positive results, including the identification of many mass graves, uh, partly ending the uncertainty of families who of those who died during the wartime. In 2021, uh, Vietnam received a number of information and items provided by DPAA. We have asked relevant Vietnamese agencies, units and localities to verify those documents. The result is that from the items of Mr. Do Thanh Cương, we found his family members currently residing in Phuc Thuy village, Hợp Lý Commune, Linh Nhân District, Hà, Hà Nam Province. 
based on some papers related to soldiers who died during the wartime. Their families, members, and relatives have been identified in Quang Ngai, Bing Dik, and Quang Nam. Currently, we are developing a plan to hand over these items and documents to their families and relatives uh, in these provinces. However, so far, a number of uh, information and items have been verified with their concrete results because the, re the information and documents remains uh, fragmented and quite hard to collate. Therefore, it's suggested that the U.S. site provide information, documents and items related to Vietnamese personnel. First of all, for single pieces of information provided by U.S. veterans, it's necessary to add uh, combined information, for example, time, location, unit, uh, provider to facilitate uh, the verification, collation, and conclusion. For information provided by U.S. agencies and archives, it's important to collate, compare, filter, and digitalize data to make sure that they are integrated and systematic. We hope that today's event will allow us to improve uh, the Vietnamese wartime accounting in the near future. Hopefully, U.S. experts will exchange a lot of experience with us uh, in information processing and verification, excavation, survey, uh, preliminary identification, analysis, identification of remains with the advanced technology uh, through uh, morphological and anthropological science and research processes analysis and digitalization of data from relevant available records and documents. Thank you very much. On behalf of the USIP, I'd like to thank uh, Colonel uh, Duan Quang Hua and Mr. Um, uh, Kelly uh, on the cooperation between the two governments. It is an opportunity to look back at the past and to build a better and brighter future. Tim O'Brien, Viet. Uh, veteran American writer Tim O'Brien writes, the war occurred half a lifetime ago, and yet remembering makes it now, and sometimes remembering it will lead to a story which makes it forever. That's what stories are for. Stories are for joining the past to the future. To continue to connect the past, present, and future, I'd like to introduce a short film interviewing three Vietnamese families searching for their loved ones last in the war. Interviews were, in, were conducted by Mrs. Chen Tu Ha from documentary film Department of VTV4. Given travel restrictions during the COVID-19 pandemic, those families interviewed are all in the north of Vietnam. I know that it would be meaningful to have families and stories from all regions of Vietnam. So as a starting point, please listen to some families' experiences in a 10-minute video. Thank you. Tôi là Phùng Thị Kim Nga. Tôi là con gái duy nhất của liệt sĩ Phùng Văn Bình. Bố tôi hy sinh khi còn quá trẻ. Lúc đó ông mới 22 tuổi thôi. Và tôi lớn lên là thiếu bàn tay che chở của cha cho nên là mình cảm nhận được cái việc mà bố mình hy sinh là lúc ấy mình học cấp 2. Mỗi một lần mà dỗ bố ấy thì ông có thắp hương và ông đều khấn là À, lá vàng thì ở trên cây mà lá xanh thì rụng xuống con ơi đau lòng lắm thì mình chỉ biết đằng sau và túm lấy rụng xuống ông, con ơi đau lòng lắm thế bố mình mất thật rồi thế là rất là và nghĩ rằng là mình phải đi tìm chắc chắn là mình phải đi tìm bố và để đưa về cho ông bà trước khi nhắm mắt ông cũng nói bà cũng nói như vậy là uh, ông nói rằng là phải tìm cho bố cho ông bà thế là mình cứ đi mò ở đâu mình cũng cứ mày mò đến năm Uh, 1997 cũng may mắn là đã có người giúp đỡ là tìm từ cục chính sách.
ta lấy được cái thông tin là à, cha tôi hy sinh ở à, mặt trận Phú Yên và từ đấy thì tôi à, đã đi vào Phú Yên để tìm cha chỉ biết là à, đã đã hy sinh năm 1970 và quy tập vào nghĩa trang liệt sĩ là năm 1978 nhưng mà khi quy tập lên thì lại không có tên thực ra giấy báo tử ấy thì chỉ ghi là hy sinh ở mặt trận phía Nam thôi cái đấy là vô cùng khó khăn cho cái việc đi tìm kiếm chỉ biết là vào trong nghĩa trang thắp hương cho cha nhưng mà thắp hương tất cả các đồng đội và không biết là mộ nào là mộ của bố mình và đến năm 2012 thì uh, sau khi nhà nước cho xây sửa lại hết các nghĩa trang ấy thì ở trong xã phố Xuân Bước họ có làm lại tất cả các mộ thì mình nhận biết được cái thông tin đấy thì mình vào và mình xin một chút mẫu để về làm giám định gen khi mà báo là kết quả của nhà cháu đúng rồi ấy, là cả nhà hà tức là cả hai vợ chồng với hai đứa con nữa là cứ ôm nhau khóc rồi và không ăn uống được nữa bởi vì là kiểu như là vui quá nó vỡ hòa trong niềm sung sướng là, là đã tìm thấy bố mình rồi tức là lúc này đúng là tìm thấy ông rồi à, đâu đó mất khoảng 22 năm mới đưa ông về quá trình đó là cũng rất là gian lao mình cảm thấy mình là người may mắn nhất so với tất cả các bạn của mình là mình đã tìm được bố mình và mình đã bằng cái phương pháp mà của khoa học bây giờ là giám định ADN để mà xác định đúng được cái bố mình để đưa bố mình về hầu như mọi người cũng chưa tìm thấy đâu hoặc là đâu đó trước đây cũng có tìm nhưng mà họ chỉ tìm cũng bằng tâm linh họ vào đấy họ bảo là cũng chỉ là bốc một nắm đất mang về thôi và cũng tổ chức và cũng có đưa vào nghĩa trang nhưng thực sự là là chưa phải là tìm thấy đúng cốt hoặc là có những người mang xương cốt về như cứ bốc mang về thôi thì mình cũng rất lo rằng là nếu như vậy thì có thể bị bị lẫn của người khác hoặc là có người thì muốn rất muốn làm giám định thì lại không còn người thân để làm giám định nữa cái đấy là cái cũng rất là đau xót mẹ tôi sinh được 10 anh chị em có 6 anh con trai là đi nhập ngũ và hai anh hy sinh anh trai tôi là anh Nguyễn Văn Trương, nhập ngũ năm 1975. Thế còn anh Nguyễn Văn Đề thì nhập ngũ năm 1971, hy sinh năm 1972 ở Quảng Trị, chiến trường Quảng Trị. Và hiện nay thì gia đình đã ăn, đón được mộ của hai anh đều về quê cả. Ý nguyện để đi tìm hải cốt liệt sĩ thì ý nguyện của tất cả các anh chị em trong gia đình nhưng một động lực mạnh nhất là của mẹ. Mẹ tôi là Tạ Thị Sầm, năm 2014 thì đã được Đảng và Nhà nước đã trao tặng à, danh hiệu cao quý mẹ Việt Nam Anh Hùng vì lý do là mẹ có hai à, con là liệt sĩ. Mẹ đã bao nhiêu lần ốm, nghĩ về các anh ốm nhiều lắm. Thậm chí là có những lần thì nhập viện hoặc có những lần như thể là, là không qua khỏi. Nhưng mà vì là nghĩ đến các anh nhiều lắm cho nên là uh, vẫn phải chờ bằng được để cho các anh khi về quê hồi đấy cụ chỉ nghĩ là nếu như là kiểu là chỉ có mẹ con với xét nghiệm được ADN với nhau cho nên là cụ đã giấu các con cháu và cụ đã giữ lại hai cái răng cuối cùng đến khi tôi đi vào trong bà rịa vũng tàu để lấy hài cốt lên để xét nghiệm ADN thì trước khi đi thì cụ có trao cho một chiếc răng và cụ bảo đấy là một chiếc răng cuối cùng của cụ để cụ giữ lại nếu như sau này cụ mất trước mà chưa kịp tìm ra thì cũng cứ giữ lại chiếc răng để tìm ra cụ đi hỏi các con các cháu người ta bảo bây giờ là vì sao mà chưa tìm được các bác là lý do là không có tên có tuổi và không có địa chỉ rõ ràng thì chỉ bằng đi xét nghiệm ADN thì cụ cũng không biết hồi đấy các cụ cũng chưa biết là xét nghiệm ADN là cái gì đâu nhưng mà người ta bảo chỉ biết người ta bảo là xét nghiệm ADN thì phải có răng hoặc là có cái tóc thì cụ và tóc của cụ thì cũng nhiều nhưng mà răng thì hiếm thì còn cái răng cuối cùng thì cụ giữ lại để nếu như mà cái phần tóc không được thì lại còn phần răng đấy à, năm 2000 ấy thì mình hay xem cái chương trình nhắn tin đồng đội đó thế là mình cũng viết đơn để gửi lên đài truyền hình thì là có một bác um, cựu chiến binh thì bác nói là trên đường quay trở về đơn vị thì thấy bốn liệt sĩ hy sinh thì là bác cùng với sáu người nữa là chôn cất ở chỗ ranh giới giữa Việt Nam với Campuchia ấy. thì trong đấy cũng có một người là Nguyễn Văn Trương 
Thế thì bắt đầu mình vui lắm Lúc đấy là cũng gọi điện về cho gia đình luôn Thì là báo là như thế Nhưng mà đấy là chỉ là một cái thông tin Nhưng mà thông tin rất là quý báo Nhưng mà à, từ sau cái cuộc điện thoại đấy là cả một hành trình vất vả luôn Cháu đã đi à, từ Sài Gòn vào tất cả các nghĩa trang Và cứ ai mách đi đến đâu thì cháu nó đi đến đấy Cuối cùng cũng gọi được mà tìm được bác ở trong à, nghĩa trang Bà Rịa Vũng Tàu thì sau khi mà có một cái kết quả về cái giám định ADN là chính xác Thì thậm chí là trông ngóng gần một năm trời Cụ rất là yếu, yếu lắm mà trông ngóng lắm Nhưng sau khi có kết quả cái về là cụ khỏe hẳn lên Trước khi ra đi là cụ rất là mãn nguyện Mãn nguyện ghê lắm là vì là đã tìm được hài cốt liệt của hai con về quê Gia đình tôi đã mãn nguyện rồi, nhưng mà trong Việt Nam mình, đất nước Việt Nam mình và ở quê hương tôi còn rất nhiều các liệt sĩ thì hiện giờ cũng đang muốn trông ngóng và đi tìm, thậm chí người thân đi tìm rất rất nhiều lần rồi nhưng chưa mang được hải cốt về. Tôi là Nguyễn Văn Bắp, sinh năm 1953. Năm nay tôi gần 70 tuổi. Tôi có anh trai là Nguyễn Văn Bọc. Đúng ngày sinh của ông ấy là ngày 25 tháng 7 năm 1949 thì anh tôi viết đơn tình nguyện bằng máu vào bộ đội và ngày 22 tháng 2 năm 1968 thì anh tôi lên đường ở nhà mẹ tôi năm 76 có ký nhận cái giấy báo tử anh tôi. Anh tôi lên đường cái từ đấy là tôi không nhận được cái thông tin một lá thư hoặc cái lời viết gì cả. Cũng không có nhận được tín hiệu là đơn vị nào phiên hiệu gì ở chiến đấu ở chiến trường nào thì hầu như đơn vị tôi không nắm được và giấy báo tử thì chỉ ghi là đơn vị GMT và hy sinh tại mặt trận phía nam tôi cũng không trách gì ai cả về cái công tác quản lý hồ sơ mọi vấn đề nó do bây giờ thời buổi bây giờ đất nước còn nghèo khó thế hệ nó chuyển giao thế hệ kia về hồ sơ thì nó gặp khó khăn tôi là Nguyễn Văn Phước là thân nhân và là cháu ruột của liệt sĩ Nguyễn Văn Bọc từ những cái năm 2000 thì chúng tôi cũng lúc đó thì về cái công tác thông tin đại chúng của đất nước ta thì về để truy tìm một liệt sĩ thì nó rất là khó khăn. Những năm 2009 trở lại đây, công nghệ thông tin, internet cũng như phát triển thì anh em chúng tôi là thế hệ sau thì cũng có đăng những cái bài đăng tìm kiếm một liệt sĩ cho chúng tôi. Thì vừa rồi năm 2020 thì các cháu nó tìm trên cổng điện tử thông tin của Bộ Lao động Thương minh Xã hội Thì có phát hiện ra là cái ngôi mộ là Nguyễn Văn Bọc Đơn vị không có quê quán không Chỉ có liệt sĩ Nguyễn Văn Bọc thôi Và ngày hy sinh là ngày 26 tháng 2 năm 1971 Thì theo giấy báo tử trước thì là hy sinh ngày 15 tháng 1 năm 1970 Con và cháu tôi cũng xuống cục chính sách Bộ Tư lệnh Pro Cũng đặt vấn đề và xin được Giám định ADN nếu đúng mong muốn của gia đình tôi là được đón anh tôi về quê Chúng tôi rất là tin tưởng vào cái khoa học công nghệ bây giờ Dùng công nghệ khoa học là dùng ADN Quan điểm của chúng tôi tìm kiếm để đích xác thì chúng tôi mong muốn là phải được giám định ADN Nó trùng khớp với dòng gen của gia đình của chúng tôi Thì chúng tôi mới mang về Mới mang về Following those stories, uh, it's my honor to introduce our three panelists who will discuss uh, their own work and uh, the stories that they are collecting and working with. Uh, so first will be Dr. Hai Nguyen, Nguyen Thanh Hai, who is the co-founder and director of the Global Vietnam Wars Studies Initiatives at the Ash Center for Democratic Governance and Innovation of the Harvard University Kennedy School. Dr. Hai is widely published on three continents. His expertise includes military and social history, local culture and religion, memory and oral history. Dr. Nguyen is also the research director of the Unseen Legacies of the Vietnam War, finding, archiving and sharing missing data and historical ephemera of Vietnamese war dead. This project funded by the US Department of Defense is the first systematic review of battlefield documents 
to locate Vietnamese war dead. Our second speaker will be Tim Reeser, who is a senior foreign policy aide to U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy. Uh, and Tim is also the majority clerk of the Senate Appropriations Committee on State Foreign Operations and Related Programs, which is now chaired by Senator Chris Coons. Mr. Reeser began working for Senator Leahy in 1985, initially as a member of the Judiciary staff and then as a member of the Appropriations staff. Reeser is regarded as one of the most influential congressional staffers on U.S. foreign assistance and foreign policy. He's known for his pivotal roles in the U.S. opening towards Cuba in 2014, the 1998 Leahy Law that bans military aid to foreign armies that violate human rights, and the 1992 law banning landmines. And Reeser has been a key supporter and driver of USIP's work on Vietnam. Our third panelist is Tao Griffiths, Nguyen Thi Tu Tao, who was born in 1978 in Hazang province. Uh, from 2007 to 2016, she served as country director of the Vietnam Veterans of America Foundation in Vietnam. In this role, she managed programs relating to continuous post-conflict issues, Agent Orange contamination, unexploded ordnance, and mental health. Now as an independent consultant on war legacies, she works in development and humanitarian assistance across many sectors, including extensive work with the U.S. Department of State and Vietnam's Ministry of National Defense. So each of our panelists will speak for around five minutes. Then we'll have time for questions and discussion. Uh, please submit your questions from the audience on the USIP website, uh, where there's a button for that, and you can submit questions in either English or Vietnamese. Thanks very much, Dr. Hai. Thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, let me speak the Vietnamese language. Um, well, uh, on behalf of the um, uh, unseen legacies of the Vietnam War, fighting, archiving, and sharing the missing data and historical uh, and familiar of Vietnamese war dead uh, project, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to be here to share what we are doing now. Also, I'd like to thank uh, the Chi governments uh, for strong cooperation along with the U.S. Uh, State Department of uh, Defense and also the Steering Committee 515. We are very fortunate to work and we'd like to thank the Office of uh, um, Ministry Attaché, uh, Mr. Joseph Mitherson. We also had opportunity to work with uh, uh, Mr. Chas uh, Somerville, uh, who has made uh, significant and excellent contribution to uh, this process. I also would like to thank uh, Jet Casey uh, uh, from the uh, uh, Palmier office in Hanoi. We also would like to thank uh, the uh, Patrick Lahey um, and also his uh, foreign policy aide, uh, Mr. Tim Reza, who is here today with us for their contribution to World Legacy Corporation in Vietnam. We also would like to thank all of you for your confidence and uh, trust in the Ash Center uh, for Democratic Governance Innovation, Harvard Kennedy School, uh, for making this challenging yet meaningful uh, research. We also would like to thank uh, uh, people on the two sides of the uh, Pacific uh, watching this event today. The uh, Ash Center of the Harvard uh, Kennedy School, led by Professor Nemesis. We initiated this pro project. We conducted uh, systematic research uh, with uh, source of information from the battlefield. Uh, uh, from uh, the uh, uh, soldiers uh, from uh, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam People's Army, and we also return the items uh, to them so that uh, if they are alive or their families, if they are lost or fallen, we also establish uh, 
uh, database uh, so that the families could uh, such a query in the future. Uh, this is a challenge because uh, as uh, Colonel Hua said, uh, time has passed so for so long, and the witnesses become old and their memories are fading. You know, while we have limited archives, so we rely very much on uh, the documents and uh, papers collected by the U.S. Army and the Alliance uh, from uh, soldiers of the Vietnamese People's Army and uh, Vietnam uh, Liberation Front. Um, <coughs> with uh, more than 3 million pictures of documents, uh, images uh, from uh, People's Army of Vietnam archived in 950 microfilms. Since 1975, many scholars uh, uh, have already uh, come to the US uh, for research, but it's still a treasure, it's still um, something that we need to dig deep to understand the information about the fallen soldiers because the uh, we need to develop the search tool the documents uh, deteriorate over time uh, the um, uh, letters on those papers uh, may be ineligible, very difficult to interpret or to understand. So we'd like to share with you uh, some pictures from our PowerPoint presentation for your information. Uh, these are samples uh, captured uh, from the battlefield. Uh, for example, you can see here the diaries or the uh, death notification or the uh, documents from the battlefield uh, with the Ranhitten letters with different codes. Uh, very difficult to decode. So uh, we work with different scholars applying different techniques. Uh, and we also uh, apply oral history and different tools to uh, make sense of the information about these fallen soldiers. We have achieved certain progress in collect information and return uh, the items uh, of these fallen soldiers to their families. So the first case here is uh, Mr. Dang Thanh Tuan, born in 1941 in uh, Bình Định. Uh, his father is Mr. Dang Thanh Tâm and her, his uh, mother is Mrs. Bui Thị Ding. In 1954, he regrouped to North Vietnam as a son of a Southern Revolutionary family. And between 1954 and 1962, he was a student in Hanoi, Haiphong, Hanam, Quang Ning. Between 1962 and 1964, he was a student of uh, accounting school in Bắc Thái, Thái Nguyen. In 1965, uh, he voluntarily joined uh, the People's Army of Vietnam uh, and went to the South. And um, in 1966, um, uh, he became the uh, uh, private uh, first class. He was in the uh, high command of artillery. And based on the documents captured from the battlefield, we also found the list with 59 photo shows us Mr. Dang Thanh Tuan uh, died on the 8th of August, 1966, at station number 10. And in this list, uh, Mr. Dang Thanh Tuan uh, was numbered 17 uh, with the uh, signature 
verifying the information. Uh, it was verified uh, by the uh, political officer of the second battalion. So uh, even though we have documents like this, it's very still challenging to verify information about the context uh, where and how he died. So we check the roster with or against the other information that we captured from the documents. For example, uh, the uh, death certificate or death notification of his uh, comrades. We also check against the intelligence report of the uh, South Vietnam Army. We also uh, compare and collate with the history of People's Army of Vietnam uh, regarding the uh, second uh, battalion uh, in military station number 10. We returned uh, the information to his family. And this is uh, uh, the uh, feedback from Mrs. Dang Thi Hương Cha. Uh, this is what the family said upon receiving the items and information about Mr. Dang Thanh Tuấn. Thank you very much, Dr. Hai. I know you have more stories to share from these very rich documents. Uh, for reasons of time, I'd, I'd like to uh, invite Tim Reeser to uh, share his remarks. Thanks. Well, thank you, Andrew. I, I also want to thank the U.S. Institute of Peace for sponsoring this discussion and everyone in this country and in Vietnam for participating today. The Vietnam Wartime Accounting Initiative is the most recent of 30 years of cooperation between the United States and Vietnam to address some of the most painful legacies of the war. That cooperation began in 1989 with the use of the Leahy War Victims Fund to provide artificial limbs and wheelchairs to Vietnamese who had been injured during the war. The fund is named for Senator Patrick Leahy, who has been the visionary for each of the U.S. Vietnam War Legacy Initiatives, and who as a member and now chairman of the U.S. Senate Appropriations Committee has obtained the funding to support them. Over the past 30 years, the United States has also supported programs to locate and remove landmines and bombs 
that continue to kill and injure innocent people in Vietnam. Programs for Vietnamese with disabilities resulting from exposure to Agent Orange and other wartime injuries, which are being implemented in now seven provinces and programs to clean up the chemical contamination caused by Agent Orange at the Da Nang Airport and the Bien Hoa Air Base. To pick up on what Kelly McCaig spoke of, none of this would have been possible without the many decades of assistance from the government of Vietnam in locating American MIAs. That opened the door to everything that has happened since. Throughout that time, we knew there were hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese soldiers and civilians throughout the country in North, South, and Central Vietnam who lost their lives in the war and whose remains have not been found. As we have heard, this has impacted practically every Vietnamese family. Over the years, there have been some attempts to locate graves of the Vietnamese missing, including with the help of American veterans of the war. And funding in 2015 from the US Agency for International Development to help with DNA analysis of the remains. But Senator Leahy felt that we need to do more to reciprocate for the indispensable help that Vietnam has given the United States in locating American MIAs over so many years. We're now embarking on a five-year program supported by both the U.S. Department of Defense and the U.S. Agency for International Development, working hand in hand with the government of Vietnam. It is our hope that by providing access to archival documents, oral histories, and other wartime information like what Mr. Hyde showed us, as well as DNA technical assistance and equipment, that we can significantly enhance the ability of the government of Vietnam to locate the remains of Vietnamese missing since the war. This is a humanitarian initiative in its purest form. And Senator Leahy wants the people of Vietnam to know that he will do everything that he can to support it. To him, and I believe he speaks for others in Washington and Hanoi, this program will not only help bring closure to some of the Vietnamese families who have been searching for their relatives for nearly 50 years, it will also, like our other war legacy programs, build trust and broaden the United States-Vietnam Comprehensive Partnership. Just as we want to overcome the legacies of the war, we also want to expand the cooperation between our countries in meeting other challenges from climate change to pandemics to regional security. And we want the next generation in Vietnam to know that despite what happened during the war, which was such a catastrophe for both our countries, we found ways years later to use that experience to create a better future. Thank you again to USIP, to the government of Vietnam, to DPAA and to all others who have helped support this initiative. Xin chào. Um, tôi xin cảm ơn phần giới thiệu của Thank tiến you sĩ. Very much, uh... Thank you very much, uh, Andrew, for your introduction, uh, and also like uh, thank Andrew for introducing not only my name but also my age. And I think that everyone in the world know how old I am. I think uh, it's a uh, good opportunity for me to start the story. Uh, I was born after the war. Uh, after the war ended uh, several years, I was born in the northernmost region of Vietnam. I knew 
most of the consequences of the war uh, in the border area with um, China. When I went to Hanoi, I saw and felt uh, the serious consequences of the Vietnam War. It's a war legacy, but if we do not address this war legacy will continue for generations to come in Vietnam and also in the US. Uh, for me, uh, war legacy is a um, issue that needs to be addressed. For young people like me, born after the war, need to understand and to be involved in this process. Uh, as uh, Dr. Andrew said, uh, I am here as an independent consultant. I uh, spent 20 years uh, on war legacy, and uh, I am not representing any uh, organization here today. I'm very honored to be here today in this panel discussion. I'd like to thank USAIP uh, for inviting me and organizing this special event. I know that in uh, the event today, we will respond to the question how uh, the uh, uh, Vietnam wartime uh, accounting initiative can contribute to the strategic uh, trust between the US and Vietnam. It's a challenging question, but we can, uh, you know, um, deep dive into four other questions between the US and Vietnam, whether we have the strategic trust or not. And if yes, is it uh, sufficient enough to upgrade it to the strategic partnership? The, how the World Legacy Corporation has contributed to the bilateral relationship, as Mr. Tim Racer said, uh, the World Legacy programs focuses on four topics you know, over the past uh, decades, including uh, UXO, uh, supporting people with disability, uh, dioxin, um, detoxification, and also uh, the wartime accounting. Uh, due to time constraints, I will be very brief uh, responding to these four questions uh, out of a big question. First, I believe that we have the strategic trust that U.S. and Vietnam were closely together. Uh, the U.S. Uh, is number one vaccine donor in Vietnam. It's not only a humanitarian issue in public health, but also of strategic importance. So the second question, uh, is the uh, strategic uh, trust sufficient? It's quite difficult to tell. It depends on who uh, you respond to the question and which organization you represent. As a uh, close observer of the U.S.-Vietnam relations over the past two decades, I can say that we are in transition and at a, a relevant point in time and with some agreement or substantial progress on some strategic uh, topics, uh, we could um, uh, achieve the strategic partnership between the US and Vietnam. In terms of uh, war legacy cooperation, I still recall between 2009 and 2022, sorry, in 2020, uh, a Lieutenant General Thượng Tường or Nguyễn Chí Vinh um, emphasized uh, the war legacy cooperation as the foundation uh, for the two countries to strengthen the relationship and other areas of cooperation. It was fortunate to work with uh, Vice Minister of Defense, Nguyễn Chí Vinh, and you can say that uh, US-Vietnam war legacy cooperation opened new opportunities uh, for us. And the last question, uh, the uh, wartime accounting initiative, as Mr. Kelly McKay uh, said, uh, before Vietnam and U.S. normalized the relationship, uh, the uh, cooperation started in 1985, or 36 uh, years now. Uh, it is uh, the effective cooperation from the early days that have already laid the foundation for the normalization of relationship in 1995, 10 years after that. So I expect that the bilateral cooperation in wartime accounting initiative will bring good results, uh, meaningful to the families 
whose um, members have already last and last and also it's important for the technology transfer uh, for agencies in Vietnam involved in the wartime accounting. I believe that uh, the progress in uh, Vietnamese wartime accounting will contribute to, to uh, the uh, strategic uh, partnership in the years to come. Thank you. That's all I like to say. Thank you very much to all of our panelists. Uh, we've received a few questions so far. Um, if there are others, please do uh, enter them in uh, the USIP webpage. So the first question is very much like uh, Tao's conclusion, um, but perhaps we can go further into it. How does cooperation in US Vietnam wartime remains recovery emphasize the increasingly solid bilateral relationship between the two countries. Uh, maybe if, uh, Tim, I could ask that question to you first, and then if uh, if Tao would also like to comment. Sure, thank you. This initiative, as I mentioned, really has built on multiple other ways in which the United States and Vietnam have cooperated over the years to address war legacies. Uh, and so it's been a process over time. And each step we take, I think, has contributed to greater trust, greater understanding, and has led to openings for ways that we are now cooperating in many other areas. So it's really these wartime legacy issues that have brought the two countries together and have created ways in which we have now been able to engage on so many other and in so many other ways. Um, and we see that continuing. On the one hand, this is the essence of a humanitarian initiative. And we saw from the video just how meaningful this is for families who have been searching for years for their loved ones. And we're very hopeful that we can help contribute to that and that more families will be able to locate um, their relatives. But we also see this very much a part of the larger relationship and that this will lead to greater cooperation between our two countries on many other issues um, going into the future. Um, I also would like to add and uh, respond to the question uh, that Mr. Andrew has already uh, asked. U.S. Uh, Vietnam cooperation is very diverse, including humanitarian uh, cooperation and also scientific uh, partnership when we have the engagement of different agencies in uh, DNA testing, uh, archiving, uh, documentation management is also involving diplomatic uh, cooperation. Uh, the steering committee 515 uh, is a political branch of uh, the Ministry of Defense. Uh, so I can say that uh, it's um, uh, involving uh, military, economic, uh, political uh, cooperation. It helps uh, the families and uh, agencies uh, to have better capacity. And I'm sure that it will contribute to uh, stronger, broader uh, uh, you know, trust and confidence and contribute to strategic partnership in some day. If you could explain a little more about your process of finding information and how do you manage the political aspects of that. Uh, and there's an additional question. Uh, do you also search for information or remains of soldiers from South Vietnam uh, or people who died in re-education camps after the war? Uh, since, uh... Thank you very much uh, for uh, this important question. 
on the research center. It is a independent research center of Harvard University. When we uh, look for information about uh, the foreign socials, we adopted different techniques and different strategies because out of millions of pages of information, we have to uh, categorize into different battlefields based on the historical records. Uh, and there are five uh, uh, battlefields in Vietnam. So we follow these uh, battlefields to look for uh, the details of the individuals uh, missing or dead uh, at the time when these uh, documents captured uh, and when the war uh, became fierce, you know, they may be lost. So we try to come up with the uh, personal biography of each and every individual uh, to uh, have the information uh, to clarify and identify uh, the uh, fallen soldiers and also identify uh, the members uh, may not be dead at that time. Uh, but we can collect the information. And third, we provide uh, personal documents and items, for example, diaries or even uh, the uh, medical reports uh, from the clinics uh, and return these uh, documents to their families. We also provide additional information uh, on the campaigns, operations, or battlefields so that US or Vietnam have better understanding of the context uh, of the battlefields and the loss of lives. Uh, so the war legacies uh, could be addressed in different ways, uh, but um, uh, what is more important is uh, reconciliation, historical reconciliation, and uh, to promote mutual understanding. Uh, each and every social is a human being. They have their own stories. Uh, so we need to understand the stories of the two sides. Uh, if we found documents involving the South Vietnam soldiers or U.S. soldiers or personnel, we also recommend how it could be processed. We are now conducting uh, information involving the battlefield in 1975 uh, related to People's Army of Vietnam or Vietnam Liberation Front. Uh, we do not have any information about uh, the uh, uh, South Vietnam soldiers who lost their life after the 1975 uh, in education camp. Uh, we uh, um, try to make it objective. Uh, we provide information to all sides uh, because this is a part of our research mission. It's also a humanitarian mission that we conduct. Uh, their families, be Vietnamese or American, uh, can have access to uh, the information and search for their Thank family you. members. Thank you. Two questions for Tao Griffiths, and you can also add to Dr. Hai's as well. Uh, so one is, uh, what do you think are the most strategic ways to enhance trust, strategic trust between the US and Vietnam? And how do you see the future of war legacy issues? Will this continue for a long time uh, into the future? Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I will be very brief because I'm very aware, uh, conscious of the time. Uh, I want, but however, I want to add to Dr. High's excellent explanation. Um, okay, I, I'm back to Vietnamese. Um, ông uh, đại diện của Bộ Quốc phòng Việt Nam, ông Đoàn Quang Hòa, trong bài phát biểu của mình. Uh, Mr. Uh, Đoàn Quang Hòa, uh, in his remarks, also uh, talks about the MOU signed uh, in July. Uh, 2021, during the visit by Secretary of Defense, the MOU uh, refers to the uh, wartime accounting initiative. And in his remarks, uh, Colonel Duan Quang Hua also talking about uh, the biggest challenge now, and that is information. 
Uh, so the question was addressed in the MOU signed between the two countries because it focused on what uh, Dr. Hai said. Uh, uh, access will be given to the declassified uh, information and archive from the US. Around 200 uh, sets of uh, documents, 200,000 sets of documents captured during the war from People's Army of Vietnam. Uh, if we can process 200,000 sets of documents, digitalize and build a database, making it possible for the public to access, and then it could be a treasure, a valuable treasure, uh, very good uh, for all families, around 300,000 families uh, searching for their uh, last uh, family members or loved ones. I uh, don't think that there's any discrimination or differences between the uh, north, the south, and the central. You know, access will be given to information that is uh, disclassified. So the next question, uh, what uh, issues that uh, can result in the strategic trust between the US and Vietnam? At this point in time, I think when we work together effectively, on Vietnamese wartime accounting, it will contribute significantly and meaningfully to the uh, Sushik um, Trust. So what do we need to do in addressing the war legacies in the future? Well, I'm very uh, moved, you know, Mr. Tim Reza said that, uh, Senator um, uh, as a chairman of the appropriation committee, uh, he wants the Vietnamese people to understand that he will do whatever he can uh, to support uh, uh, not only wartime accounting, but also war legacies uh, in Vietnam. Uh, Senator Lehi is quite old. He is now uh, in his 80s, and he said that he may not re run uh, for the uh, Senate again. So I think uh, we need to have the uh, generational transition so that Vietnam will continue to have the support from the US, uh, from the state and politicians from the US, they will maintain the support for war legacy cooperation in Vietnam because the war legacy, it takes time to be addressed. Uh, given the existing efforts, I think we can basically uh, address the priorities areas in the years to come. Uh, the war, World War One and World War II uh, still have these uh, consequences today with the UXO. Um, so we need to minimize the risk. Uh, uh, we have the technical measures. What we need now is the political commitment and to uh, leverage the window opportunity because um, uh, we need to deal fundamentally these issues of war legacy. Thank you. Thank you. To close today's events, I'd like to introduce Huang Titenga, who is a minister, counselor, and deputy chief of mission of the Embassy of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam to the United States. Ms. Nga entered the Foreign Service in 2000. She served as Deputy Director of the North America Division and Director of the Research and Analysis Division. Uh, she's had overseas assignments with the permanent mission of Vietnam to the United Nations uh, and joined the Department of International Organizations in 2014 as Deputy Director General in charge of human rights and social issues. So welcome, uh, Ms. Nga. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ambassador George Moos, uh, Senior Colonel Duan Quang Hoa, uh, Mr. Kelly McKay, uh, Mr. Tim Wieser, uh, Mr. Andrew Wiles Duck, and uh, dear friends, uh, thank you very much for having me uh, today. Uh, I wish to sincerely thank the Institute of Peace, representatives of the U.S. Administration, uh, Congress, uh, Vietnam government agencies uh, for the joint efforts and dedication in making possible uh, this meaningful event and the War Legacies and Reconciliation Initiative. Uh, I would like to convey the warmest congratulations and thanks uh, to um, our American and Vietnamese friends uh, from Ambassador Ha Kim Ngoc, who is in Vietnam now and cannot join uh, the event today.
uh, addressing poor legacies has been one of the areas of cooperation between Vietnam and the United States for many years. Uh, we have worked closely to account for American servicemen missing in the war, uh, to clear unexploded ordinances in many provinces in Vietnam, uh, to have persons with disabilities and clean up Agent Orange in Da Nang, uh, Bien Hoa Airport. We all know how much important these achievements are in the process of healing the wound of war and reconciling our two countries and two peoples. Uh, I am deeply touched by the stories uh, shared by living witnesses in the video clip we we'll have watched today. Uh, a daughter found the remains of her father, a sister and a brother found the remains of their older brothers, thanks to the documentation and DNA testing. Uh, we are also pleased that the documents that the DPAA transferred to Vietnam have helped uh, identify the families of the Vietnamese uh, martyrs. Uh, we know that hundreds of thousands of other families in Vietnam are still suffering from the pain of not finding the remains of their loved one for decades. The government and people of Vietnam have made enormous efforts to search for the remains of Vietnamese soldiers uh, missing in the war. Uh, but there are a lot of challenging, challenges facing this, uh, given the financial and technology constraints. Uh, therefore, the assistance from the U.S. government, partners and friends to help account for Vietnamese uh, missing in actions is very important and meaningful. Uh, I share the insight of many uh, previous uh, panelists. Uh, the cooperation in addressing war legacy has been very important for Vietnam-U.S. relationship. It helps relieve the pain of many families, uh, promote people-to-people -people ties, contribute to trust building, uh, and enable us to achieve what we have today uh, in our comprehensive partnership. Uh, on this occasion, I would like to express our gratitude to great friends and partners from both Vietnam and the United States who have devoted huge efforts uh, to this noble mission, uh, like Senator Patrick Leahy, uh, General Nguyen Chi Vinh, uh, Let's send it to John McCain, uh, Mr. Robert Mueller, Mrs. Anne Mill Grinfis, uh, among other Vietnamese and uh, American friends. Uh, we, are great, uh, we are very grateful for the strong leadership of Senator Patrick Leahy and uh, the quick role of um, uh, Senior Advisor Tim Reza uh, in promoting the initiative on accounting for Vietnamese uh, missing in action. Uh, once again, let me reaffirm the strong commitment of the embassy uh, to working closely with you, uh, especially uh, the Institute of Peace and uh, our partners, friends from both Vietnam and the United States uh, in this noble mission. Thank you very much.